You good? So let's pick a second scenario here. Now in our second scenario, we are going to pick a denominator. In our second scenario, we are going to pick a denominator which has what? A quadratic factor. So assuming I have express express 2x plus 1 over x plus 1 and then x squared plus 3 as partial fractions as partial fraction now this is one linear one quadratic okay and for the linear ones we learned in our previous lesson that if you are given let's say 4 over x minus 1 x plus 7 we can write this because it's linear and both are linear we can write this as a over x minus 1 plus b over x plus 7. now when it is quadratic let's say i have 5 x minus 1 over x squared plus 5 and then x minus 1. we can write this as because this is quadratic, x squared plus 5, you can write this as ax plus b over x squared plus 5, then plus c over x minus 1, which is for the linear. Expressing this as one quadratic is ax plus b for the x squared plus 5, and then for the linear, we have c over x minus 1. The same way I can give you another partial fraction, and I write 2x minus 5 over x plus 3 and then x squared plus 7. So you write, because the linear is starting, you can write this as a over x plus 3, then plus, we have the quadratic, so it becomes bx plus c over x squared plus 7. So you go ahead and then you solve it. I'll teach you how to solve it. Very simple, just like the way we solved the first one, okay? So one linear, one quadratic, tell you, pause the video. So this is one linear, one linear, and another linear. This is a linear and then a quadratic. A linear and then a quadratic. Now, be careful of what you see sometimes. Sometimes I can give you a scenario where I'll give you 4x minus 1 divided by, then I write, x squared plus 5x plus 6. Now, to you, because you are seeing x squared, this is quadratic. But if you are really smart, you realize that this quadratic can be factorized. Okay? So, you can write this as 4x minus 1 over, now 1 times 6 is 6, factors of 6, we have 2 and 3 to give us 5. So we have x plus 2, x plus 3. So what you see as quadratic, sometimes doesn't mean it is really quadratic. Because this one has 3 terms. So we can factorize this, okay, to give us this. So this one actually means that this is even linear, okay. And you can express this as a over x plus 2 plus b over what? x plus 3. So what you actually see as quadratic here doesn't mean it is um, ax plus b, and because you are seeing this, you say ax plus b plus c. No. We normally, it is what? Something that can be factorized. This is an expression that can be factorized. So in that case, we can write it as 4x minus 1 over x plus 2, x plus 3, which are the factors of this. And you can write it as partial fraction as x plus a over x plus 2 plus b over x plus 3. So this is not a quadratic factor, okay? But this is rather a linear, one that has what? Two linear factors, okay? a over x plus 2, then plus b over x plus 3. So the quadratic factors we are talking about are this type, okay? When you have x squared plus 5, x squared plus 7, and so on and so forth. Now let's solve the example on the board. Express 2x plus 1 over x plus 1, x squared plus 3 as partial fraction. Now, in our solution, you realize that we have 2x plus 1 over x plus 1 and then x squared plus 3. So we have one linear and then one quadratic. So this becomes a over x plus 1 for the linear and then for the quadratic, we have plus bx plus c over x squared plus 3. So we are going to solve this and then get the values of what? a, b, and c, and then replace them here to get, um, the, the, to get the partial fraction we are talking about. So let me clean the board so that I have space to do it. 
I hope my explanation satisfies what you want. Okay. Now, solving for A, B, and C, what we are going to do is we shall have 2x plus 1 over x plus 1, x squared plus 3. This is equivalent to we shall have our LCM is still x plus 1, x squared plus 3. So x plus 1, we're going to do this to our left with a into what? x squared plus 3. Then plus bx plus c, we're also going to this. This we're going to this to our left with what? x plus 1. Okay? Now, because the denominators are the same, we are going to say that the numerators are also what? Equal. So we shall have 2x plus 1 is equal to, we shall have a into x squared plus 3 plus bx plus c into x plus 1. Okay. Now, you realize that the second method I gave you in the previous example, when x is equal to negative 1, after solving, you can get the value of a by what happens to b. So you see, the best thing to do is what? Expand. Get the coefficients, compare them, and then you get your simultaneous equation, whether in two or three variables, depending on the, term, uh, the number of variables you have. Okay? So depending on the number of variables you have, will determine the simultaneous equation you use, whether it's two, uh, simultaneous equation in two variables or three variables. Okay. Now let's expand. This will give us 2x plus 1 is equal to, we shall have ax squared plus 3a. Then plus bx times x is bx squared. bx times 1 is bx. c times x is cx. And then c times 1 is positive c. So we shall have 2x plus 1 equal to, now we shall have, let's compare, uh, let's group like terms, okay? ax squared plus bx squared. The coefficient of x plus bx plus cx, the constant plus 3a plus c. So we shall have 2x plus 1, then we shall have a plus b, coefficient of what? x squared, plus b plus c, coefficient of x. Then the last term is 3a plus c, which is the constant. Now comparing coefficients. Comparing coefficients. When we compare coefficients, we realize that our x squared, this means this is 0 x squared, okay? Our x squared is 0. So we shall have the first equation as a plus b is equal to 0 because there's no coefficient of x squared here. So it is 0 x squared plus 2 x plus 1, okay? So a plus b equals to 0. That's our equation 1. Then coefficient of x, b plus c is equal to, the coefficient of x is positive 2, so p plus c is equal to 2, equation 2. And then the last one, the last one we shall have 3a plus c, 3a plus c equals to, the coefficient for the constant is positive 1, 3a plus c is equal to 1, we call this equation 3. So this is simultaneous equation in three variables, okay? Now, but we are able to eliminate one variable, okay? It becomes easy for us. Now you could see that in equation one, I have positive b. Equation two, I have positive b. So we can try to eliminate b in equation one and equation two, okay? So from equation one, let me write my equation one down. A plus b is equal to zero, equation one. And then b plus c is equal to two. This is my equation two. Now, if I want to eliminate B, I can say equation 1 minus equation 2. So, I will have A minus C. Okay, A minus C. Then B minus B is 0. You see, one thing is, what I have as B plus C, I can write it as C plus B equal to 2. So, I'll have, I'm subtracting A minus C, which is this. Then B minus B is 0. And 0 minus 2 is minus 2. Okay? So we call this equation 4. Then I have my equation 3 down. 3a plus c is equal to 1. Equation 3. Now if I want to eliminate c, I have negative c and positive c. 
So if I want to eliminate C, I can choose to add equation 4 plus equation 3. So equation 4 plus equation 3, this will give us A plus 3A, which is 4A, okay? Minus C plus C is 0, and minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. So A is equal to minus 1 over 4. So since we've gotten the value of A, we can find B, okay? So we put A equals to minus 1 over 4 into equation 1. And equation 1 says A plus B is equal to 0. So A is minus 1 over 4 plus B is equal to 0. So B will be equal to positive 1 over 4. We just take the minus 1 over 4 to the right. So our B is 1 over 4. Then how do you find C? So we can also say that C plus B is equal to 2. So put B equals to 1 over 4 into equation 2. So putting B equals to 1 over 4 into equation 2, we shall have C plus B is 1 over 4 to be equal to 2. Okay? So our C, our C will be equal to 2 minus 1 over 4. Our C will be equal to 4 to 8. 8 minus 1 is 7. So this will be equal to 7 over 4. So therefore, we have our A to be equal to negative 1 over 4, B to be equal to positive 1 over 4, and then our C to be equal to 7 over 4. So writing or expressing this in partial fraction, okay, this will give us our A to be what? A is negative 1 over 4. So I have negative 1 over 4 divided by x plus 1, plus our B is also... 1 over 4, so 1 over 4x plus our c is also 7 over 4, okay? All this divided by x squared plus 3. So this is going to give us negative 1 over 4 into x plus 1. Then plus, this will give us x plus 7 over 4 into x squared plus 3. So this is how we express this in partial fraction.